welcome, welcome today to a very special episode uh, of the Savior's Cross broadcast. Uh, I'm Pastor Jeff Williams, and uh, we're coming to you uh, live from the sanctuary of West Franklin Baptist Church, and just so good to have you. Uh, we've got a very, very special uh, broadcast tonight. I want to welcome uh, preacher Jamie Ellis uh, tonight. And uh, a very, very special, special guest uh, tonight, a very special uh, young lady. I would like to introduce to you tonight um, Elizabeth and I, our uh, youngest daughter, Zoe Williams. And uh, uh, we've asked Zoe to come on. Uh, we've got some, uh, some subject matter tonight that we want to talk about uh, concerning uh, the life uh, of evolution, and uh, we've asked uh, Zoe to come on and uh, help us uh, answer some of these questions. Uh, as most of you know, that we are going through uh, the book of Romans. Uh, we're still in Romans chapter 1, and uh, we're going to start out uh, reading in the text in just a moment uh, in verse number 18 and work our way down to the subject verse tonight, uh, which would be verse 20. So uh, we want to get started uh, in uh, just a few moments. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome again uh, Preacher Jamie. Uh, brother, what's going on in well, your world right now? Just just uh, continually working and doing what the Lord wants us to do. And uh, excited about uh, this coming Saturday, uh, Pastor. Looking forward to the crusade and uh, this coming Lord's Day, of course, you know, want to forget tomorrow night service either but right amen i'm looking forward to what we're going to see the lord do uh in the coming days i i think we you know we're looking at we've been through a lot this year and going through a lot even tonight a lot of a lot of folks are but i i want to say that the best is yet to come amen jesus is in control amen praise the lord praise the lord well, once again, we'd like to welcome Zoe, and uh, we're going to go ahead uh, with the help of the Lord and uh, start in verse number 18 uh, tonight out of the Expositor Study Bible, uh, and we're going to read the text and, and uh, read the notes and come down to verse 20, uh, and then we're going to get into our discussion uh, on the creation account and uh, if you have some uh, children or some young people uh, that may be interested uh, in seeing this, uh, maybe give them a call or, or share this uh, uh, live uh, video because uh, we believe it will be some interest to you. So, uh, Brother Jamie, you go ahead and, and start if you will, and we'll see where, where the Lord would have us to go. For the wrath of God. God's personal emotion with regard to sin is revealed from heaven. This anger originates with God against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. God must unalterably be opposed to sin who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Those who refuse to recognize who God is and what God is because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. This speaks of the universal objective knowledge of God as the creator. And I want you to listen to this note, which is more or less in all men. For God has showed it unto them. It means that his signature is creation. And that's what we want to, to look at tonight, uh, the subject of creation and concerning the um, Brother Jamie, the, uh, I guess we would call it the measure of knowledge or light that, that God has given to all people yes. in some regard concerning uh, creation. And uh, we want to look at this verse, and, and we'll keep in mind, this is what God is saying concerning the human race. And what God has to say is what we need to, to listen to. Brother Jamie, if you would read the first part of verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. This explains verse 19. Being understood by the things that are made. Creation demands a creator. 
even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. The creation tells us of the eternal power of God and is obvious to us all. And we want to, we want to ask uh, our special guest tonight, we'll go ahead and get started, and we want to ask uh, Zoe a couple questions uh, that she's done a, uh, a good bit of research on, um, and we're going to give the credits here in just a, just a little while from where our subject matter uh, that was taken, and Zoe done this research. But I, I want to ask uh, Zoe a question, and Zoe, I want you to give us uh, your answer uh, concerning evolution. And everyone's heard of the Big Bang Theory. And uh, evidently, the Big Bang Theory is where whatever was out in space, wherever, and there was a cataclysmic explosion, and somehow this hurled us into civilization. Uh, Zoe, the Big Bang Theory, what do you think about this theory, and do you think there are any problems with the Big Bang Theory? Well, I do think there are some problems with it, because first of all, where did the energy come from that caused this explosion? And what caused the explosion to ignite? How actually did all of this form from two molecules of energy accidentally bumping into one another? Also, there should have been other forms of life that were sent off on other planets besides Earth. And what, what was before the Big Bang? Evolutionists say there was nothing. How do I get something from nothing? That answer is simple. You can't. So you're saying that this, it was impossible, and it is impossible, to get something from nothing. That's right. So there had to be something... So therefore, that points to a creator. That's, that's good. That's a good question. That's a good answer for that. And uh, I think, I think there is a lot, uh, there's a lot of children uh, out uh, in the public school arena that is being exposed to this, uh, we're calling it an untruth. Uh, and by the way, uh, evolution is, is only a theory. It is nothing that has been proven uh, with um, hard, hard science. Uh, there are some out there that try to take uh, this and try to uh, take that and push, pull this together and look for the missing link and, and all of this thing, all of this. But uh, the Bible says here, the Bible says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Brother James? Yeah, um, as, as it's already been proven as we're looking at it tonight, creation demands a creator. And to come to the second question tonight as we uh, uh, have Zoe here, and I, I'm just excited about this, seeing what God is doing in her life. Uh, Zoe, I want to ask you this question. If, if evolution is true, then why aren't things still evolving? Well, the obvious answer for that is because evolution wasn't true in the first place, as we Christians believe. But let me give you a quick example. If things were still evolving, I would still have eight body parts. And people would be producing apes, not other humans. Evolutionists don't tell you this, but there has been no record of any transitional fossils, which means that there has been no record of any fossils found that are a half ape, half man, half lizard, half bird, etc. Wow, that's good. There's, and, and that's a very, very, uh, Zoe, that is an awesome, mm -hmm. awesome observation. Yes. I mean, just to, uh, with all of the, of, the, of the books that has been written on evolution and all of the science, so-called science, that has been thrown behind it to try to prove this theory. Um, and I think, I think you, we need to say that one more time, Zoe, concerning the transitional fossils. Um, t tell tell the, the listeners and the viewers again one more time, what, well, what is a transitional fossil? 
A transitional fossil is a fossil found that, you know, um, a half ape, half man, or a half bird, half lizard. There's been no fossils like that found in the history of mankind. So there's no fossils that actually prove that anything is evolving. No, there's not. Wow. So it remains a theory. It remains a theory. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That, 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 that still goes uh, along with um, our verse tonight. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. All right, Zoe, we have another question for you. How have, how have some animals evolved without, how have some animals evolved without dying because of chemical changes in their bodies from evolving? That's a good question. They couldn't have. Take the bombardier beetle, for instance. This beetle has two chambers inside its body that, are, that hold two different chemicals. When this beetle feels threatened, his brain triggers the chemicals. When these chemicals mix, it is a very complex chemical reaction, and the chemicals shoot out of the abdomen at 212 degrees Fahrenheit into the face of an attacker. How could this have evolved? If it did, the chambers holding the chemicals would have blown up inside the beetle, causing all of the beetle population to die out, thus being no beetles today. But the Bombardier beetles, beetle still exists. Wow. wow. Never <laughs> thought about that. You know, God is an awesome God. And for us to assume, uh, and there's, there's multiple examples of, of these uh, insects, and and fish and and just different species that God has has made and uh, one of the things that uh, comes to my mind guys is is uh, in the original creation account in uh, in Genesis uh, the Lord said that he made animals after their kind That's right. he, he made animals after their kind in other words uh, uh, he created uh, the dogs and after their kind. And that does not mean necessarily, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that does not m mean at that particular time that he created all of the breeds. He created the, the dog, what, what, whether it was a wolf or what, we, we, we don't know, the Bible doesn't say. But uh, Zoe, let me ask you this. Uh, before I turn it over to uh, Brother Jamie. Um, you and I, we had discussed the difference in uh, evolution and adaptation. Uh, what, what, what would be the difference in, in um, something that is evolving versus something that is adapting to its surroundings? Well, to evolve means to change gradually. But adaptation, um, let me give you an example of an animal that adapts to its surroundings. Okay, there's a fox called the Arctic fox that lives in the Arctic. And during the winter, its fur is white to blend in with the snow. And so he won't get eaten. But in the, in the spring and summer, his fur turns brown with, with, the, with the plants and everything that's around him and the dirt and stuff. So he won't get eaten there. He, when his fur changes, he is adapting to his surroundings to protect himself. And even that in itself, we could say, is a gift from God. That's right. To allow this species to survive. Brother James. Yeah, that, that's, uh, I think that's an excellent example of, of uh, uh, adaptation, how that God protects his creation. Yes. How he uh, uses his plan to, and it just, it just proves the, the reality of a of a of a of a, a creator. I mean, how could you? I mean, it, as as the scripture here uh, clearly lays it out for us, uh, uh, guys, tonight uh, it places us without excuse. There is no excuse for anybody to try to deny that there is a God because 
the creation uh, and, and, and this wonderful uh, explanation of adaptation, glory to God. I mean, it just lays it out that, hey, God is running. He's in control. Uh, this couldn't happen any other way. Amen. Amen. Any other way. Amen. Brother Jamie, you and I, we were speaking before, the, before the, this episode tonight concerning uh, the eternal power. Uh, before before we ask Zoe another question, let let's read uh, the the text again, and I believe you have some scripture and some thoughts you want to share uh, to share with the folks. Uh, yes. Go ahead and read uh, verse twenty again. Okay. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Explains verse nineteen, which we just read, being understood by the things that are made creation demands a creator even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse the creation tells us of the eternal power of god and is obvious to us all brother uh brother jamie where does the eternal power and godhead what what is this verse saying well, it's, it's, it's explaining to us, it's, it's actually pointing to Christ as our creator. I, 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 that's the way I see it. It's pointing to Christ as our creator, uh, saying uh, that his eternal power and God, and, and this is not just, it, that of course we know that Christ is the center of all things, but it, it's pointing to him and the power of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all involved. When you go back to Genesis 1, the Bible says that uh, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, one thing we need to understand about creation and everything, it, it, it all begins with the moving of the Spirit of God. That's good. Everything uh, that God does, it begins with the moving of the Spirit of God. He says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Mm -hmm. And God said, let there be light. I mean, God said, he spoke it. Yes. He said, let there be light. And there was light. And when we, we think of that, uh, Pastor, we... Uh, you tie it in with uh, the New Testament as we see our Lord coming down, as we see uh, God himself, hallelujah, uh, manifesting himself in, in flesh. He came into this world in, in, in verse number 14, and the word of John chapter 1, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So he became flesh, but in the beginning. Now, yes. let's go back for just a second. In the beginning, <clears throat> while the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, in the first verse of this first chapter of John's Gospel, in the beginning was the Word that speaks of Christ. Christ is the living Word. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Yes. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was That's made. Right. Right. In Him, the Scripture here says, was life, in verse 5. And the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, mm -hmm. and the darkness... Comprehend, it, it could not comprehend. The darkness comprehended it not. So we see that uh, the creator and the sustainer of all things is our wonderful Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, another reference comes to me, uh, uh, guys, tonight from Hebrews chapter number 1. Um, uh, we see the, the, that Christ is the... He upholds all things. Now, I, I want to just give you those verses. He, the, the first verse says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake 
in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things yes. by whom also he made the worlds. Yes. Yes. He didn't, listen, he made the worlds, the planets, uh, the stars. He flung them out into space. I'm telling you, God spoke these things into existence uh, according to God's word. And, and, and you go on down in that verse in Hebrews, and it says that he upholds all things by the word of his power. He's upholding everything that's, that's uh, uh, going on in the universe, not just our world, but in the universe, the things that we don't know, the right. things that we, the galaxies that we have not been yeah. able to look into yeah. and, and uh, talk about. I'm telling you, in the, the space way beyond the, what we could ever imagine, God is upholding that by his own power, by his word. It's through the word of God. Amen. Preacher, uh, what excites me about this and what this, this is showing us through, through God's word, through these passages, is the eternal Godhead. Yes. God the Father, God the Son, yes. and God the Holy Spirit have have forever been there wasn't just a period of time that jesus was formed yes formed in his body yes but jesus has always been there has always been god the god the father god the son and god the holy spirit and i find it incredible preacher it's incredible uh, and it shows it shows the the completeness that is in christ that the Godhead turned, uh, God the Father, I guess, and correct me if I'm saying it incorrectly, but he turned all of this over to the Son. Absolutely. I, he, everything is about his Son. Uh, when God, as we look at the Word, it, I mean, you can start from Genesis uh, 1, 1, 1, all the way to the, to the 22nd, go, go all the way to the Revelation, all the way through the end. To the maps, amen. I'm not telling you that yeah. God has has centered everything uh, on His Son. Now, let me say this: I don't want to be misunderstood. We don't want to be misunderstood sure. about the Godhead because uh, without one, you you don't have anything. You there's the complexity of God Himself. God is a spirit, right? And as Jesus declared it, and they that worship Him, He told her. He said, must worship him in spirit, spirit and in truth. truth. So we know that God the Father is, a, we know that God the Father is on the throne. If you read Revelation 4 and Revelation 5, you will see, I mean, as we speak right now, we have a heavenly Father yes. that is seated Amen. on the throne right. in the third heaven. Right. And his Son, our Lord and Savior, our Hallelujah, our Redeemer is seated at his right hand. And he's and as we speak now, all things are under his feet. Amen. Everything. Uh, when Christ did what he did, and, and this, of course, as we've been teaching for uh, months and months now uh, on this broadcast, uh, you know that our... Our emphasis is Christ and Him crucified. That everything points to that. Everything points back to the cross. The, the centerpiece of the world is what Jesus did, Amen. preacher. Amen. On the cross. And 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 not just that, but everything that comes, there's there's so much more um, uh, in that and through that that we have not yet come to understand. I, I mean, I am in the learning mode, brother. Amen. I yes. am definitely in the learning mode. I am a pupil tonight. Yes. And uh, to listen to the things that Zoe has already described is, is amazing. How God can take a beetle and, and protect it. How God can take a fox and protect it in its environment. And uh, just think of how God, as we are, uh, if we go back to the third chapter at the close of God's creation, the crowning of his creation, uh, 
guys tonight is is man. And he said, and again, the Godhead is seen. He said, let us make man yes. in our own image. And so you see that uh, the Godhead came together. Amen. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit said, let us make man in our own image. Ain't that something? In, and in the image of God created he him. Amen. Amen. Brother, do we have another question for, for Mrs. Owen? Yeah, that, that next question is... Um, uh, it's kind of a transitional from what we were uh, talking about, but it brings us back to point, case in point, um, on this thing of creation. Does did, did dinosaurs die? Now, I know a lot of people have questions about dinosaurs, but did dinosaurs die? Did they die out uh, at the flood or in the flood of Noah? Um, I believe they did. In fact, a scientist in Montana was studying a dinosaur thigh bone and she found living tissue inside of the thigh bone. And the tissue was intact and it could not have lasted for 65 million years. But it could it have lasted for 4,400 4, years? How long ago Noah's flood was? It could have. So this proves that dinosaurs did die out during the flood. Not 65 million years by an asteroid. Wow. <laughs> that's right. Wow. That's, that's something to look at that. I know that a lot of us over the years have, have had questions about the dinosaurs. And, and uh, we, we, we do not deny the fact that dinosaurs did exist. Um, and all, there was a point in time uh, through, through the knowledge of, of the Heavenly Father, there was a point in time. Uh, that I guess their purpose was served or whatever the case, whatever that w would be. But isn't that something that a dinosaur thigh bone was found and inside that thigh bone was tissue that living was tissue. Li a living tissue that was ident Well, that, that substance that was in that bone was identified as tissue. Now, for someone to say that, that that could have been there for 65 million years, and by the way, some scientists say that an asteroid hit uh, 65 million years ago, and uh, some of these hypotheses that, that scientists um, throw at us for answers for these things, um, and the point is, folks, the point is, Really, the answers that scientists so-called try to throw at Christianity to, to disprove is almost silly. It's, it, it, it's, it's almost silly. Um, uh, uh, Zoe and I were talking concerning um, time and chance. And scientists say uh, and teach through evolution that we, we came to be through chance and time. And it's almost, uh, and I've, I heard this from another uh, uh, expert on apologetics and creation, and I began to think about it. Uh, he mentioned it's like a person walking through the desert and looking down and finding a pocket watch. And looking at this pocket watch and peeling the back off of it and seeing all the gears that are working mm -hmm. and all the little fine uh, pieces inside the watch that just very crafted in a perfect way and then making a statement that that watch and this watch ticking by the way and keeping perfect time that this watch came to be by time and chance <laughs> and that uh, that is that is kind of preposterous uh, in and of itself just to try to think in that way and uh, guys, this really does go back to what God's saying in this verse. For the invisible things, yes. for the invisible things that, that God has, he has revealed these things to us. And the bottom line is, the bottom line is, and, and we, we can talk further about it, but the bottom line is creation demands a creator. And if there is a creator, which there is, yes. 
then mankind and this world and the universe for that fact is subject to this creator. And this creator is God. And God, as, as Preacher Jamie has, has so well said, God has chosen to reveal himself to us, the Bible says, in these last days through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through his son. Yeah. I, I want to I touch on that, that watch thing, the clock thing, um, how the complexity of the, of the creator of the watch. I'm reminded of what David said about his yes. body. Oh wow! About the about us, he yes. said. He said we are fearfully and wonderfully yes. made, and we are. I mean, the the human anatomy, the the body itself. Scientists are continuing uh, research. They, 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 they there's no stopping point. They keep on and on and on trying to figure out how that they can clone, how they can how that right. they can make. Uh, make man the way they want him to be. That's ex that's what's actually happening today. There are people in this world who are trying to clone. They're trying to use science, science so-called, to create their their own kind of race. And it is it is totally um, it's it's totally uh, sen it's <laughs> senseless. I I've had discussions with. Uh, Zoe, I've had discussions with with uh, my son and other people about this, and and it 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 just makes it's totally nonsense. Uh, there is no sense to it. Uh, there's no possibility of that really happening, and it being uh, uh, what uh, people think it is. And and um, but uh, God, as the scripture here in this twentieth verse, uh, oh my. For the invisible, think of, think about this. For the invisible things of Him, of the, look at it. He says, from the creation are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Now let's think on that a minute. That made. Look at look around. You you. I mean, if we just open our eyes. Yes. We just look around. Mm -hmm. The the things that are made reveals the fact that God is. I mean, I can't even remember, uh, guys, when I, I, I can't remember a time in my life, even before I came to Christ, or he brought me to himself, rather, um, that I, I didn't believe there was a God. I've always, the, the, and, and the scripture here, as we've read verses 18, 19, and verse 19 in particular, and then verse 20, uh, 19, given the explanation of verse 20, um, you know, there's something inside of man. There's that, there's that God, uh, even though man fell in the garden and he died spiritually immediately, progressively he died, uh, you know, and he was dying in his body because of sin now. Yes. And then eventually uh, he, he, he died. So, uh, but we find here that this, if you look around, as, I've, as I'm trying to state this, and God give me the words tonight, um, as you look around, you can see by the things that not only that are made, but what's going on around you. Yes. Just look at what's happening in our world. Yes. Our world, the Bible, to deny God as in any shape, form, or fact is to deny His Word, deny anything. I want to tell you, it is totally the fool has said in his heart yes. that there is no God. Amen. Amen, brother. This 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 verse come to my mind. Uh, in First Peter uh, chapter one, uh, uh, verse brother, uh, you're very familiar with First uh, Peter chapter one verse eighteen. Yeah. For as much as ye know mm -hmm. that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, that's right, as silver and gold from the vain conversation of your 
uh, received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And this is what I want you to hear, verse 20. Who was, who verily was foreordained yes. before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. I think that I think that's amazing. Um, that the things that that God wants us to see, God desires to reveal uh, to reveal truth to His people. Absolutely, absolutely. You have a comment? No. Um, let let's let's go ahead and we'll we'll. Um, move into question uh, number five. We were, we were talking uh, and discussing, Zoe, the, the issue of time and chance, uh, which brings us to this last question. How can, thing, how can things happen by accident? <laughs> and, I mean, how could this world have been created by accident and by chance? Well, think about this. Let's say a billion years ago there was a tree and it fell into the water. This tree got shredded up as animals treaded on it. Eventually the wind picked it up and formed a cardboard box out of this shredded paper. And the glue flew into the air and hit the right spots to glue it together. Then the paint flew into the air and fell on the box to form the word Amazon on the side of the box. This could not have happened by chance. There had to be a box maker. Wow, that is incredible. That is incredible. Uh, Creation demands a creator. Amen. That's that's wonderful. I I think about uh, uh, time and chance. And, you know, even right now, guys, at this broadcast, with God, nothing happens by chance. That's right. Nothing happens just by uh, a roll of the dice, per se. Uh, even right now, the, the, the God of endless time, the God that, that has always been, the God that is described in the Bible in the Hebrew alphabet or the Greek alphabet, the Alpha and Omega, uh, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Uh, this, this time right now, may, there may be someone listening yes. uh, that God has has preordained or foreordained this time for you to begin looking really at what uh, you have been believing all this time. Uh, I know that it is popular. Mm-hmm. It is very, very popular uh, in the day that we live in, guys, to not believe in God. That's, that seems to be the popular thing and the, and the popularity of unbelieving or disbelief seems to be growing the culture that we that that we have and uh, i want to say this too uh concerning the culture and our children um uh you know with the help of the lord um uh my wife and i we have chosen uh to to do our best to uh attempt to to homeschool uh zoe and i know everyone can't do that uh, but we, but but we need to be very, very careful as to the uh, educational material that our children uh, are being taught from. And I would even say this: parents, uh, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to question uh, the material. Don't be afraid to question the material that your children. Uh, are being taught at school. Amen. Amen. Uh, and please, uh, please be involved in the material. And um, I, I, may, I may be getting off uh, subject just a bit here, but, you know, a lot of times parents, if we're not careful, uh, preacher, we're just concerned with the bottom line. We're concerned wh- whether it's an A or a B or an F. You know, and as long as, as the A's and B's uh, are coming in um, you know, sometimes we just sort of let it go but it, it would be a terrible thing it would be a terrible thing for my child to come home with an A or an A plus in the subject of evolution 
And to be able to be inundated, uh, what do you think about that's that? A, that's Dexter? tragic. I mean, it's tragedy, and it, and that's what we're seeing. Uh, I mean, uh, for the, the 51 years that I've been in the world, I can, I can, I can look back and see the changes, the rapid changes. Uh, we can uh, uh, look and see what the school system uh, has done. When when you take prayer. When you take God and you take His Word uh, outside of the classroom, and and you say you don't want Him, uh, it's a it's a doctrine. Yes, it and is. these people are being indoctrinated. Our uh, the generation today. Um, I never dreamed. I, I I'm just honest. I look back as even as a young, even going back as young as Zoe. I never dreamed that I would see the the uh, the, the this kind of anarchy, uh, the things that are happening in this country, and I'm going to tell you now: these people that are doing what they're doing in our in our land, yes, sir. What's happening right now? These are people who have been indoctrinated in secular humanism. Yes, and they've been taught, hey, there is no God. They've right. been told this. They have been preached this. Yes. But now when you start talking about Christ or you start talking about anything pertaining to him, well, I mean, it becomes an immediate offense. People are offended. Why? Because the same God, now I, this, I, I want to just bring this out, uh, guys, tonight. The same God that created man in his own image, when, when he knew that man would sin. God knew this. And so Adam, the first federal head of the human race, he's the father of the human race, fell when he fell in the garden. God had a plan already yes, mapped out from yes, the foundation did. of the world. Right. Uh, yes. Jesus Christ was a lamb slain. It was already predetermined that Christ would come over a little over 2,000 years ago now. And hallelujah, what what we lost in the fall. Yes. Glory to God. Yes, we Jesus. got at the cross Amen. and that and much more Amen. in the power of that resurrection life. Yes. See, here's the thing about God. <laughs> He's not going to leave man alone. No. He's not. He's not in, in the sense you say, well, what about these people out here that don't hear the God? Listen, friend. Understand something. God, he is an, he's independent. He, if there's anybody independent, he don't need us. He don't need our advice. He don't need our <laughs> knowledge because the knowledge we have came from him. That's right. Anything that we know, it was it just because of him. And the things that we, the scripture has said, this verse 20, I, I, guys and, and people, folks tonight who are listening, this verse you really ought to meditate on it and think about it. How that God, I mean the invisible things of him. Think about it. From the creation are clearly seen. That's right. That's I right. mean clearly, that clearly seen. Yes. By the things that are made, even as eternal power in Godhead so that they are without. There is no excuse. That's right. Uh, it reminds me of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29 and 29 concerning revelation. Uh, the Bible says in the Old Testament, it says the secret things belong unto the Lord, yeah. our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children yes. forever that we may do all the words of this law. And I, I still have it, uh, guys, on my heart. Uh, concerning our children, yes, uh, and what our children are 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 being taught from the world, uh, it's a very very serious thing, and I, I really don't believe that we totally grasp the the, the depths of the seriousness, because uh, 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 folks, our children, if our children are being taught that there is no such thing as creation. There's no such thing as a six day or a seven day account 
of, of how man and humanity came to be. And, and this truth is pushed away from their little minds. And they're inundated at a very, very young age uh, that there is no God. Uh, my, what a tragedy that is. That's such a tragedy that, that a little child would start off his or her life, even going through teenage years. And, and our, our teenagers right now, for, for the vast majority, is, is, is pushing this secular humanism and, and this atheism and, and this, this worldview that uh, maybe there's something and maybe there's not. And, and these young people that are going through life not having an opportunity to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, the, the Bible says here, uh, the, the last words uh, in verse 20, those two words that, that says uh, without excuse. God, is, God has plainly revealed this to us. In other words, God has given us an advantage of revealing things to us. And, and we don't want to be uh, in that crowd that suppress this truth That's right. and push this truth away. And as we mentioned, uh, preacher, last week, uh, when someone pushes away truth, even if it's even if it is minute, and there there's no not one of us here at this desk and uh, that that knows everything about God. There's no way that we could know Him in His totality. There, there's it's just impossible. But just to know that God has, has cracked open the door to humanity and let us into his world and provided a way of salvation that you and I could be saved is, is most magnificent to say the least. And I, I, would, I would hope and pray yes. that we would all consider uh, what our children are, are taking in and um, I'll just use this time, and, and preacher, you take it from take it from here. But I want to use this time to 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 put a plug in for West Franklin uh, Baptist Church. Yes, um, amen. Have the the children's department here uh, at West Franklin Baptist Church, um, you can guarantee uh, that uh, our children and whatever children the Lord sends our way will be well versed uh, in the creation account Amen. Uh, and will also uh, be uh, somewhat well versed even in American history. We even feel here at our church, I never thought that it would come a time where Sunday school curriculum uh, preacher would have to, have to involve some American history. But our children are not being taught history correctly that's right. uh, within the public school system. And um, we, we're going to make sure, uh, with the help of God, that we teach the generation that comes out uh, of this church uh, that, 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 they, that our children is going to know about the Bible. And our children is going to know the creation account. And our children will be able to be as a young Timothy and be able to defend the faith. Yes, uh, uh, the, the, the epidemic here is we, what we're facing tonight as we've been facing for years is uh, that man has taken the truth of God, tried to, to change the truth of God and change it into a lie. Yes. And, and I want to say this, there's even Pilate said, I find no fault in him, in right. Christ. I mean, as Christ was examined, I guarantee you, the world had their eyes on him, friend, when he came into this world. And again, tonight, I want to I say this, whether the world wants to re re admit it or not, you're going to have to deal with the fact that Christ is real. Amen. He is alive. Yes, he, he is, is well. Yes, he he is, is not feeble. 
He's not a That's weak right. God. That's he's a right. strong God. He's a mighty God. Yes. And he is in he is in total charge, in command tonight. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. And he has he's got this all that's happening. Um, I know many of you probably are trying, you're scrambling. You're trying to figure out what in the world am I going to do? What are we going to do? What's going to happen? What's going to happen next? Well, the thing about that is, is the danger is if, as, as the pastor has already brought out, if you reject the light, even the light that we have received tonight and magnificent light here through Zoe, has, how God has used her to, to show the fact that God is, a, is God. He's the creator. Uh, if you reject that light and turn it away and push it back, I want to tell you, that's, that is the most dangerous move of your life for you, to, for, for you to receive. And then, you know, light rejected, is it, it, it induces more darkness. Right. But light received, when you open up and say, hey, look, I'm, now let me look at this for myself. Instead of listening to the voices that are around you, you, you listen to what, take, give God a chance. Give him an opportunity. Let Amen. him, I mean, listen, open up the heart and the mind and uh, I will tell you, I, there is no doubt in my mind that God will show himself to you. He wants to. Amen. He, he wills to. Yes, it's not will. his will that any of us should perish, right. but that all of us should come to repentance and all of us should come to him through his son, Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That, that, that's a good thought, uh, preacher, concerning someone that may be struggling with uh, maybe the teachings of evolution, uh, maybe the teachings of, of atheism. Um, it's a true statement what you said. If, if a man, woman, boy, or girl will, will go to a quiet place and, and they will just simply ask mm -hmm. God to reveal himself. I mean, oh, yeah. I don't think it's out of the way preacher to ask God to ask God a question God if you're really real yes show yourself and and God will show himself it has to be it can't it can't be with um, uh, uh, a half-hearted though that's right. it can't it can't be you, we can't go to God and play games that's with right. God but if if someone is truly 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 seeking truth Mm -hmm. And they go to God. God will show them. Yes, sir, he will. That man in the far regions of the dark corners of the world, uh, tonight, I'm telling you, he's seeking. Uh, the one that maybe has never heard what we're hearing, or what we've heard tonight, the gospel, the, the things of God, uh, the, the fact of God has been, he is seeking. There's something on the inside of him. That is drawing him. Yes. See, he is looking to get back. That's the magnificent thing. And, and I, I was, I want to reach that. I want to say, I know we're getting ready to go come to a close tonight, but I, the magnificence of what, of who Christ is. I mean, the whole total, some total plan of God is that even though man failed, for God so loved the world. Let's go back to the very simplicity yes. of it all. Yes. For God yes. so loved Praise the, the Lord. world. Praise the Lord. The world that he gave. Amen. His only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God, God has even in man's uh, fall, his sin, his wickedness, ungodliness. Uh, listen. God knew all this. He, he had it all planned out, but he had the plan. I know a lot of people are, are thinking, what's going to happen in November? What's going to happen? Brother D.R. Harrison. Yep. What's about to happen on the 21st through the 20, 26th, I believe? They're going to be in, in, uh, up there. They're there now. Washington. In Washington, D.C. They're going to have a big, uh, a, a big tent revival up there. 
And this is historical. The, the things that are happening right now. You, you know, the devil would have us to get our minds turned aside and look at everything, all the bad. That, and there's a lot of bad going on because of sin. Right. But God is on the move. God oh, is man. on the move. There's yes. some things happening right now. God is setting things up. He's opening the floodgates. He's giving America, again, one more. I believe it's the one more chance from God to this country. All, hey, the, the, there's no excuse for all the baby killing. There's no excuse for all right. the, the things that have happened in this country, the wickedness. I mean, look at what's going on out west. Look at what's happening. Mm -hmm. you, you, you cannot deny the fact that there's evil. And in the same respect, you cannot deny the fact that there's good. Right. So the knowledge of good and evil is ever present in front of us. But the knowledge of Christ, listen to this. Now I want you to get this, is what the devil does not want you to have. Anything, anything else in this world that you can think of and you can get your mind on, he wants you to think on that. That's right. If he can get you away. But I want to tell you something. If you turn your eyes to the Lord Jesus Christ and look at him, hey, do a personal examination. Read his word. God primarily speaks to us through this book, his word. I mean, there's no, as I've studied this book for 32 years, and, and continuing to study. And the Lord have mercy. The more you study, the less you realize you know. Amen. And as God unveils truth, you realize the vast responsibility that God has laid upon us. There's a responsibility on this panel yes. here tonight. Amen. We are being held accountable for what we're saying. Yes. God Almighty is looking down and he sees what's taking place right here tonight. And, but I want to tell you this. He looks at you. I, I have, we have no idea how many is watching. We're glad you're watching. And tonight, if Christ, if you don't know him, I'm telling you, he is available. He loves you. He died for you. He took you with him in death, whether you realize it or not. You look to him, trust in him, and I'll tell you, life will turn around, friend. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. In, in these last few minutes, um, I, want, I want to thank our special guest, uh, Zoe Williams, for coming in. And uh, Zoe, quickly, uh, there may be someone out there uh, watching, maybe maybe another young person out there that, that's thinking about giving their life to the Lord and getting saved. And they may think that, well, I've got to go to a church. I've got to wait till I talk to this person or that person. Uh, Zoe, Tell, tell the folks just uh, quickly uh, the night and the situation that surrounded the night you give your life to Christ. Well, you don't have to wait on anything because actually I went to a play at a church and when I came, it was about the Easter story. And when I came home, I was thinking about that play when I got in the bed and they, they, the play it, they made it like, like somebody was playing Jesus and they, they was nailing him to the cross. And I got to think about that and that touched my heart. And Amen. I asked the Lord to come into my life and save me and he did. Amen. So you don't have to wait on anything. Amen. 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 So, so um, you just asked the Lord while you was laying there in your bed to, to come into your life. And that's how, that's how easy it is and how simple it is. Christ will come to where you are. It's right. It does not matter. Praise the Lord. If you if you are watching, as Pastor uh, Jamie said and, and, and Zoe, uh, and don't know him, you can know him tonight. You can call upon him as Lord and Savior. Just simply, just ask him. Just call out on him. Call out to him and ask him to come into your life uh, just tell him that you're tired of the life and tired of the, the mentality and the frame of mind that you had. And I tell you what, it is wonderful to know the truth. And the Lord himself will begin to impart that truth in your life. And, 
And the Holy Spirit uh, that will come to you and come to live in you at salvation, he, he will begin to reveal all things to you, all of the questions that you have in your life. Just give your life to him. And um, before we go, we want to make sure that we give credit uh, to the material, uh, study material that um, uh, Zoe's been looking at. Uh, have you considered by Julie uh, Von Vett and Dr. Bruce Malone? Uh, Dr. Bruce Malone uh, had come to our church um, uh, a few months ago. It's been a little over a year now, and he is a great, he's a great apologist and has some wonderful material, uh, DVDs. Look up uh, Dr. Bruce Malone online. You can find him. He's got a lot of great materials if you want to buy some things for your kids or for your grandkids. Matter of fact, we have some of the materials here at West Franklin uh, that we'll be using. And uh, also uh, the book, A Closer Look at the Evidence by Richard and Tina uh, Cleese. I believe that's how you pronounce that. We just want to give credit where credit's due. Amen. And we appreciate the wonderful work that there's folks out there that have given their life ministry over to the work of apologetics in the creation field. So uh, we thank God for them, Amen. and we thank God for you on behalf of the Savior's Cross broadcast. God bless, and Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Good job.